Hey everybody, welcome to another episode. This is episode 461 of Creatives Ignite. Used to be called Design Recharge and sometimes I still call it Design Recharge. My dog's over there making noises. Um, so if you were expecting, if you're listening and you heard the last one and you're like, cool, I really like this inspiration thing. I can't wait for the next one. I can't wait for the next one too. Um, hey, Brian, I am Brian, Brian and Brian. Um, Today, we, I, I had to just pivot quickly. Um, I really do like these inspiration things. So I have them slotted for a couple different months um, because I think it's really cool. I think it's a cool exercise for us to do. I remember one time um, in a power station, Paul was like, uh, you know, I'd like to know what books y'all like. And so then we all brought our favorite books. I brought stacks and stacks of my favorite books and i just think hey brandy it's it's fun to be able to see what y'all like and what's inspiring you and then to see what you know it like it helps i don't know get a new little window and the inspiration can be there it also is just sometimes we're in our own heads too much and we don't realize how somebody got from here to here by looking at this, that we don't get it. Like, but they saw one thing in this thing anyway. So I really, really like the, the inspiration one. So we are going to continue with those, but today I had to pivot. Um, I don't want anybody ever to feel pressured, you know, like I want them to be on the show when they're ready. And I knew because it was the ABCs of February, Damien does all these different posts the, during the whole month. And he does a lot of research and he does these illustrations. And I had an idea and I just gave him an out and he said yes. And so he's going to be on later in the year about that. So today I decided to show you what I've been working on. Um, one, I don't know if you know, but I have my design business is called Little Bird Communications. I don't really ever talk about the stuff that I do, but today now and the next week, we're kind of talking about how I've collaborated with somebody on a website and how, how I work stuff into that and the things that I'm interested in and how I can kind of use those things to better my clients. But today is kind of in the middle of, well, it's a third of the way through a 75 day challenge. Now, I'm not doing the challenge correctly. I just needed the accountability. So I don't really know. Uh, I know a few people that are doing in the challenge or I know of them. Um, I, I know one girl, but there's like 300 people from all over the world. And most people are following uh, Jenna Blackburn's prompts, but I'm not. I'm just doing these birds because I had I have a goal for myself to do some patterns uh, and some more collections. So I know Maura will understand. And you, when you're doing a collection, like they all kind of need to go together. And, um, but it's like 12 pieces that go together and then another 12 pieces that go together and then another 12 pieces that go together. So the goal was I had to have a set of robots done and now I really like birds. And I was like, okay, I want to do birds. But then I wasn't, when I was doing my planning for the year, when was I going to do all these birds? So I wanted to do the drawings and do the illustrations in January and then start um, executing them in the computer as patterns or executing the drawings in February. And for the most part, I have, I have been able to do that. I've still been making too. So there's this part of making, but I was using, um, a a process that I haven't developed really well. It's not something that I do. You know, a lot of times people will do a challenge because they want to get better at a, a process or better at a type of drawing, or maybe it's a, they want to do better at a subject matter, kind of like what I'm doing. And I don't really know how like these illustrations are going to end up I don't know how they'll live. I didn't have a, a goal from the onset. And I think there's Jack. He's like, I'm tired of this. I'm going to my bed. But how often do we 
just start something because we just want to get better at it. We don't really have this big goal of making a book or doing, you know, whatever. We stop animation. We just wanted to get better at something. So I realized that I saw when I was doing some sketches of birds, I realized that some of my birds, I was getting too tight and they were too, um, I don't really want to do photographic birds. You know, if I want to do photos, I just take a photo, you know, or buy a photo. Man, my friend Roy Wilhelm, Will, anyway, W-H-I-L-H-E-L-M, um, Helm, Wilhelm. Wilhelm probably is how it is. Anyway, he is an amazing bird photographer. I know him from when I was at VCU. VCU. He was an undergrad and he was a designer. And he now is taking these birds. And it's like, you know how I just think it's the guy how God works. It's like he's putting these people that are doing the same thing that I'm interested in or I'm interested in looking at. At the same time, I've just been seeing Roy's stuff on Facebook. So it's really a photographer. Should have had a link. Anyway, um, thank you, Maura. Um, so what I'm doing is I've realized that I had a deficiency on my ability to create um, in a certain way that I wanted to create, which was using cut paper. It's a little bit easier for me. Sometimes I'll do paintings. And then if it's not right, I just build on build it up, which I think is helpful for me. That's how I did the Victor book sort of, I did Victor, um, if you don't know, you're going to get the whole messy cla- uh, messy room today. Um, so this book I created using um, Dustin's brushes in Procreate, but then I also did um, like, this is the AT&T envelope. This is the Discover bill, you know, the inside. And I do, did all these some of them, like the brown is from Procreate, but most of them were actual, you know, cut paper things. And then I just put them in the computer and the brown, the black layer came on top. So I have worked in this cut paper way, but I haven't done it since Victor, really, I don't think. And I hadn't, um, I haven't ever really done birds that were more real realistic but I again hey Courtney I didn't really want them to be perfect okay so I, at the same time Adam I don't know if y'all have Jackson's art supply over there but um and I don't know if Maya y'all have it either but we have there's one Jackson art supply in Maine in America and so we can have things shipped to us and they have a paper sale I think it must have been Maybe it was December, January, or is like over that like window of months. Anyway, I like was like, oh my gosh, these things are really cheap. I want to see how they work. And most of the ones that I got, I you know, I like them okay. I'm but I'm always looking out for new things. So I'd really tried just the Jacksons, um, like the lay flat, the sketchbook, or the um, and I tried to like. I always try to keep the thing in the back, but I put it in the front this time. But this paper was a little thinner than what I liked. But I got these Cotty papers. I don't know if you can get them from another place, but I freaking love these sketchbooks. I like this long. I thought this would be really good for like a um, landscape. Now I'm getting really warm, so I'm wondering I'm going to take off my jacket. Anyway, so... Um, I decided that I was going to um, use this one because sometimes I don't use really nice ones, but it wasn't that expensive, but it was, it's like, uh, let's see what the GSM is. It says it is 20, oh, sorry, 20 to 10 GSM. And they come with those like, um, you know, papers. So anyway, I but the paper is thick. Listen to this. And it's a rag. Oh, beautiful. And I'm using dark, thick ink. And I'm just, and you know, it's a nice cream paper. So I really, really, really like these. I will definitely buy more of these. Um, <laughs> I really like these. 
these, this isn't Jackson's, but I decided I was, I had done some drawings in another sketchbook that's over there that where I was getting too tight and yeah, list of favorite paper. Ooh, that sounds like a good idea. Um, all right. So I decided to use, I was using, I thought maybe you guys would want to see some of the tools too. Again, it's not like it's anything amazing, but I really like these Ecoline brush pens. And I don't know if you know this, but they're like a watercolor brush pen. And they're really, you can push hard. I'll show you in a minute. But I have like two, I have more. It was like a set of grays, like warm and cool together. Um, but mainly I've been drawing everything with these two. Now, sometimes I'll use like, these are like highlighters, you know, and they have two nibs, that nib, which I almost never use. And then this one, that's like a brush nib. Now they do have a real highlighter one too, but I like these brush ones. Um, but like, here's another eco line. But did you know that you can refill these? You can open them up. And if maybe you don't like this color, you wanted it to be a little darker, you could actually add some other eco line in it. So let's see. So here's some eco line. Um, I know it's having trouble focusing. This is why, anyway, the tech issues have been all about. I know it's really difficult. You're not even really going to be able to zoom in unless Chris zooms in for me later. But um, you take this and you open it, you squeeze it out, and then you could fill your little uh, markers with the same color, the 728 or whatever color it is that it is. But I have really enjoyed these two lightest gray um, markers colors i mean that i did just get in a set and eco this is a watercolor so it is it's it will i think supposed to re-reactivate but the, they're not really re-reactivating which with water i mean i haven't dug like why isn't it but i love this paper freaking love this paper okay i'm trying to get my little brushes things up here to stay but they're really nice they have a good thing so um, and the only other tool that I'm really using besides scissors, well, I guess one other tool, but the, I use, and I don't know, I grew up in, um, my first design job was at a craft magazine in Colorado called Memory Makers. And I learned about all these acid-free and lignin-free things that you would, obviously, if you're putting your photos down in something, you don't want them to yellow. You know, when I was growing up, all of our all of our family albums, photo albums are all yellowed and the paper's yucky, you know, like it's ruining the pictures, the, the quality, the, anyway, you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not. Nobody's saying anything. Anyway, so I learned about these tape runners a long time ago and I, and they're, you know, all over the place now. I mean, Walmart, Amazon, I just buy but I really do like the refillable thing. So this comes out, this you keep, and then you just get a new one of these and you, um, it just clicks in. And I, these are probably my favorite. Now, of course I can't get it clicked in, but it has this little thing. So that's the side that you, um, but it's clear and it is really sticky, but it's not too sticky. But I, this is a permanent. You would want to get the permanent adhesive and it's the Tombow Mono. Anybody know about these, care about these? Obviously I'm using them for art things and they would last and they're not going to yellow or get yucky. Anyway. Okay. So that's the, one of the other things that I'm using, but I love these Cotty books. Okay. So then now I'm, I mean, some of them are really dark. Oops. Buggers. Okay, so um, I obviously can't hold it up because all my little scraps that are in this one spot are falling up. So I'm just going to take them out so I don't make a mess. Um, so these, this is where I've started using, I'm not using pencil really. I will use some pencil later, but I'm using these mainly the lightest one. And that's how I'm getting 
but they're like watercolors. So, or maybe they're watercolor. Um, and then you can build up. So it gets darker with each layer. They're transparent. So I've been drawing these birds. Now the one, the birds that I drew before were with pencil and they were tighter or I was painting them with watercolor or acrylic or whatever. It was way too tight. And it, it was like, I was trying to, anyway, I was trying too hard. So I really, I really have just gone on Pinterest, which I know probably it's not okay, but I've, and some things I've been melding my own or finding, but like some are just really funny um, positions. And so obviously in the next rendition, you know, which I'm going to show you in a second is that I start here and then I'm move to kind of making my own sort of, but positionally, but like the, these were his legs. I just, I ran out of room. So there are limited palettes. Um, and I'm just, you know, they're, these aren't meant to be, but these are meant to be the sketch that I'm actually making the thing from now, this one, I'll show you in a minute, but this one, he's totally looks different but I kind of use the same sort of positioning. I'm trying, I was trying to do a landscape here. Some ostriches, an ostrich. I'm just going to go through these really quick. I guess I could do it the other way. Well, you can see it. Bye. Anyway, so I don't know, bears and some women. Hey, Dave. Oh, you have to have two to everyone, Dave. Then you can say Eden. Y'all, sometimes I flip things, you know, and I take my notes in church, but these are like the ones I did him and he, I think he's a failure. Like, I mean, not this one, but the one I'll show you, but I've done this honking one. I haven't done this flying one. This was like a flamingo. This was this blue egret or blue heron. Um, you know, it's like getting their necks are really long, these geese. And then some other birds, the flamingo that I liked. So I really look at that one's eye. I was, I was really excited about it. Sometimes I'm making, figuring things that I could make patterns. This looks like I'm drawing, this is the back of a duck. I don't want to do ducks right now. But anyway, I'm just telling you, showing you. Kind of weird, made him a little weird. I'm really having trouble a little bit with the um, legs, but it's okay. And these are my notes from church. I have another flamingo. This flamingos were a little bit more difficult. I ended up doing this one. These were some sketches for a client thing. I Usually that's how I used to use my sketchbook. I just do whatever it was like, whatever date to whatever date. But then I'm like, I don't really want to put the client stuff in here. Um, and then some fun kind of just still trying to figure out what parts I can do. Again, these are pretty much two colors of gray and then just that orange um, notes not eating Tic Tacs during Lent, um, bird flapping. Here's some more. This is one I made more recent. These are kind of like not real. They're definitely putting my own spin on it. This is the one I did that was flying, but like this is uh, the lady who waited on us at 211 with my dad, but that's how like you can get that thick. That was this one. You can get that thick of a, um, mark and that thin of a mark with that brush. This is a cracker barrel. I'm just drawing anything cracker barrel. It's a place to eat like good country cooking. Anyway, these are my chickens, not my chickens, but the chickens that I was drawing. So I'm going to do chickens next. And those were notes about at church. Okay. So the other thing that I've done, oh gosh, well, I really made a mess. I didn't realize all of the stuff, all the stuff fell out. Anyway, so what I did was I started with just some Fabriano mixed media paper. And I've had to buy two sets. Um, Dave, have you ever gone to Jackson's Art Supply? That's where I got this um, Cotty Papers. Uh, I love it. Anyway, so just to kind of let you know, I have been, I just painted paper. With, I may had uh, maybe five colors and then I mixed them. I made my own, like made some browns. I made 
some things so blue and orange you know like a they make a great kind of brown so i'm just painting paper first so i made my own paper and i made all this paper which does seem a little excessive but i've just been making and now all of it is some of it's cut some of it's not and you can tell like i've already used this you'll see this in a second but and i kind of separated it in by color but so some lighter ones, these would be good for bills or legs or I don't know, maybe there's some things, but I just was going after texture. Um, and obviously we're just, I was just getting all the browns here and oranges, but you know, I, I'm just making whatever. I don't have a plan of how I'm going to be using these, but I really ended up liking kind of this texture that I was getting. And that's what I ended up using for some of the beaks. So let me stick these back in. I think in the right spot, hopefully. If not, it's so okay. Cool. Nobody's, nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to care. But the Fabriano paper is pretty good. It's a not too heavy, but it's heavier weight so that they can kind of stand on their own. Now, when I started this side adventure, I was just going to do it in January. But then I this Jenna Blackburn started this. It was like a dollar a day. So it was seventy five dollars for is really a community for the accountability. I know I needed accountability. I don't know if you're like that or not, but I needed accountability. I needed some people to encourage me when I thought, oh gosh, I do not think this looks good. Or to be like, you know what? You're going to have some bad days. You're going to draw some ugly things. And that again, okay. They're hard to fit in a little bit. So anyway, I mean, and I did all these blues and um, I had some big brushes so I made some that look like, so I just took the brush and did this like, like this the whole way across, which made some really nice, this one maybe is kind of looks like it's having a little trouble with the heartbeat or something. But, you know, again, I'm just thinking, and I was able to use some of these for sure. I haven't used all of them. I did really think I was going to do more bluebirds, I think, um, but I didn't, but this is, I have plenty of paper in the color palettes. I did end up adding red because of the flamingo. So I had to make a little bit more. And then I ended up needing some more white because most of the birds that I was doing were white. So I needed some, I didn't want to just be drawing in gray. I have added some, so there are some mixed media, but to kind of give you an idea, like here's this, I use scissors and the only other real tool that I use, oh, two tools actually, scissors who cares nothing special with the scissors um is of course i can't find it is it not in here no there it is these these are like reverse got hair in them reverse i'll show it to you in a different way um tweezers can you see i'm trying to you squeeze and then it'll hold the thing that you're gluing. So it's really nice. Um, the other thing, somebody, when I was doing or trying to play like I was doing um, lettering, hand lettering years ago, this is a electric, can you hear that? It's an electric eraser. Well, what I realized is I was having, you know, these tiny little pieces. And when I was trying to erase like the edges from where I was drawing, I was having trouble. So they were getting bent or whatever. So then I got this out and it, I just pushed the little button and it does it. And it was great. And I think there's like, these are refillable. So anyway, this was, I had never used it before. I bought it because it was somebody probably recommended and I thought, oh, that wasn't very much. And then I never used it, but now I'm using it and I really appreciate it. So these, these are super, super, super great. Um, oh, Adam thought I had made tissue paper. So this was all me making paper. And then I had a call with Paul and he's like, I think you should use some real collage paper, Diane. And I was like, cause he knows I like collage. 
if you didn't know, I really like collage. So I was like, you know what? Good challenge. Paul, I take you up on that. I'm going to, I'm going to do it, but I will literally have tiny pieces of paper and then I'll make them work. So this was, I don't love this paper that I made. I've tried to use it, but it's not don't going great. But then like, here's some of the orange paper that I think is great for a leg or a foot. And since a lot of my birds are white, they just have a, a tiny bit of it, but it's fairly thick paper. I think you mostly can hear. Now, sometimes I've added a little bit of extra texture. Let me just turn these over so you can see them when I, and again, here goes the Blair Witch Project. Okay, so I'm going to show you my birds that I've done so far. So sorry if you have um, already seen them. So, but you'll see them in a different way, I think. Okay, so you get the idea of these. Oops, I forgot to turn that one over. Oh, it's pink. So you get the idea. There's some really nice, I think, nice textures. This one may be too much over there, but some are really subtle. And then like, I thought these would be good for beaks or for especially the chickens, their little combs or whatever. But even this one, there's some extra texture that I added after I did the paper. I added some extra and like this one, if you can see, can you see the, gl the glitter? Anyway, so I added some gold. So I'm going to just scoot that over. This is my desk. How messy it is. There you are. Repeated. Now here are the ones that I've been making. Now this, is, I tried to put them in order. So this was the first one that I made and I didn't erase all the pencil marks. Now, sometimes it doesn't bother me, but I was like, I mean, this doesn't really look like an ostrich, but sort of, and I was okay with it, but I really liked the blue, the green. And then this is just that, I think this, um, the 704, the other one is 728. Um, is the Blair Witch stuff, is this okay? Can somebody tell me in the chat or is it too, oh, I got to throw up again. Or not again. Anyway, nobody's commenting. So then I would, at this point, I was adding some color after. And some of the stuff was like coming off because it was too water soluble. Um, so like some of this texture I added after. And so there, but there are multiple, you know, I'm it's multiple sheets cutting together. Um, you can kind of see. Anyway. I'm just going to keep going. Really need to see them close up. A little seasick. Okay, I'm going to try to. So then I would also use some white. Um, like, I can't remember what that. It's this pin. This Uniball Signo. I use that one. Or a Posca pin. A uh, paint pin. But that's what I was I colored over, sorry, a color. I'm trying to make it really still. I think, I think I just drew his eye on there, but the beak is tape, you know, glued on, but then I thought it was too dark. So I added some of that gray and then he's kind of weird. He, they don't have legs yet. Some of them, no legs, but I really liked that texture. Okay. I'm going to try to not be so I'm sorry about the tethering cord. I can hold it in my mouth, but then you won't be able to understand me. Anyway, I like him. Sorry. I'm just recycling paper from school. So this is my um, colleague's <laughs> syllabus that she left around. But I really liked what I really liked is some of this kind of the texture that's happening when I was painting. Now, you can tell there was this other texture. And then I added some of this really light gray. But sometimes I start, at some point, I stopped just drawing in. Look how cute his little head is. Drawing in the eyes, and I started um, paste, uh, I started cutting them out. And then I made a pink one. Thought, and it's gold. Woo! So less layers on that one. Oh, it is an eye. 
you can see. Ugh. Anyway, but what this has done, you can see that's an eye. I mean, it's separate little thing. What I've done, I'm going to, this one's the biggest one. Did you know that their neck is the same length as their legs? Crazy, huh? She, she or he has gold also. Anyway, I like his little face. Okay, so then I went to geese and I was like, okay, sorry about the get making you sick. Um, I went like that. Look at its head. That's just the way it was painted. You know, it just had that tiny bit of white in there. I thought that was pretty good. But it didn't have very much uh, gray. It had that tiny little bit right there. Um, but again, I added some colored pencil and added a few other little elements. But what I've noticed, oops, it's going to go away. What I've noticed is that I'm able, oh, I think I forgot to hit video. There we go. Maybe it's easier, better. I think maybe they get a little, he's still my favorite probably. Um, he does have, there was a lot of texture in the stuff, but I, there's lots of extra pieces of paper, you know, and sometimes I'm taping, you know, but anyway, there's that one. And I, then I look at just, um, a photo and this was terrible because I got too, way too tight. And then look at his feet. Like they're terrible, like, ugh, but you remember the ones that I went and did with the brush like this? That was this part. And I thought that was, oh, sorry about that. I have the weather channel. Clearly it doesn't know that I'm sharing my screen. And he has like a little bump on his head, but that's how it was. So hopefully, oops. Anyway, this one had too many pieces. I'm not going to work from photos anymore. That's when I really committed to doing the illustrations in my sketchbook first. So here's another there, yes, Ed Emberley's. I agree. I love it, Ed Emberley. Here's a little, um, but it's sometimes they were challenging, like, can I use this blue to make the gray color? Do I need to be so tight to what the colors were? And here was one that I'd really just had a silhouette, but I, it was a blue heron and I wanted it to, so it's pretty small. I mean, I don't have big hands, but you can see his little eye thing and you know, I kind of had to piece it together because it wasn't, but cutting all these little, and I'm just cutting, I could cut with um, X-Acto, but I'm just cutting these with scissors. And then I started going more personality. She was like walking. And I know she sort of looks like a duck, but this was again where, could I use some of this color that I have? Will it still kind of look like a goose? I don't know. And I, for me, because I had seen a deficiency in what I was able to, to draw. I like that I was being challenged to what part of the paper could I use to get, even though this would be back in space, this is really up front. So this he's honking, but I really, you know, this is one sheet and I thought that was kind of cool how that worked and the feet are getting a little better. Doing a little texture there with his, or, you know, with the cutting, not as many layers. Then the prompt that one day was cats and this is my cat three. So it would be interesting to see all the birds assembled into a large collage. I agree. Then I went really big. Did you know that flamingos have teeth? So I drew those in, but he also has some shinies. But from the illustration that I had in my sketchbook, it was a, um, oh, I guess you can see all that. Maybe photos better. I guess you're still seeing the little line. Sorry, I don't know how else to do it. Um, anyway, I did that. The yellow piece is, draw, is cut out, but the black piece is just drawn in. Okay, anyway. But I'm realizing that I'm able to give myself a little grace and play a little bit more because I'm forcing myself to use this paper that I had done. You can see just a little bit of gray and I'm picking these weird angles. If you saw the photo, you'd be like, that doesn't look anything like it. 
and that's okay. That's better for me. This only has like two pieces of paper. So limited, um, really limiting on that, which I thought was good. Kind of a weird little guy. This one was the same paper that I made the cat out of, but I was just using the areas that weren't as dense. So, you know, and he was looking that way. So just trying to get different kind of perspective. Again, I know it's not perfect. And then somehow, I don't know why, but I went big again, but I was doing this from a drawing. I was trying to see if I could do the blue. I added in this, I added in this, but I really liked the textures that the paper that I painted, I was able to get. And I like that I'm able, if I mess up on something, I can just cover it up. Um, I have multiple, um, you know, beaks in my sketchbook where I didn't like the one. So I peeled it off. This guy got a little drip of water, but it, their beaks don't really look like that. You know, it's, you don't, wouldn't see it like that. So this is me taking some creative freedom. And then I decided I kind of was getting tired of geese a little bit. And so I was like, well, what's another kind of white bird? Cause I had all this kind of light paper. So I did a seagull and a lot of this is one. It just, it was on this piece of paper, particular, this one had blue and it kind of went to gray. And then some of that gray I've drawn in and then I drew in all those white. And then these two are pieces that came together, but all of this is kind of one piece of paper. So, and then his legs, I think his legs are the better legs if you're compared to Lee. But one thing I'm realizing is that I'm able to take my drawing and then draw with paper and I don't have to look at the photo. Then, you know, at some point, maybe I'll get, be doing a whole bunch that are just out of my imagination. But this is one that I had drawn now I can't find my sketchbook, but it, this is one I had drawn. I think you can probably see the sketchbook a little bit better, but see, there's the that guy's head. I don't remember. There's the blue heron. I mean, I wasn't, didn't have a lot to work with there. See the guy's little eyeball? Okay, let me see. We're getting close. This is the one. Oh, this is the one that is this guy. So not exact. I think this guy's beaks a little bit better, but again, at least I'm getting more confident in knowing how a bird's shape is and where I can kind of um, push it a little, but again, lots of texture and I kind of go a little overboard in a place in a minute. So then Paul was like, you should add some real collage. And I think I actually did another one first, but so this is the inside of an envelope again. This is the outside of that, um, these uh, cotty, um, you know, these things. And I just put a little, it's a dark gray, it's gray. And I just colored it with the darker gray here, this one. And so I was able to kind of, Again, I think from the photos you're seeing on Instagram, you're not able to see that this is another piece and then this is another piece and this is another piece and this and, you know, you're not able to see all that. And that's OK. This I had to paint a lot with white because I didn't like what I had at that point. I don't know. This is interesting to anybody. I have no idea. Anyway, then, Paul, you'll be happy with this one. I'm glad you challenged me for sure um, that. I added just the dark gray from that Cotty sketchbook. And then that's another piece from something else. But I really like the textures that I got when I just painted the paper. So these I just made small and I was like, okay, they just were a little coupled together. Again, that's just a darker piece, but those are two separate pieces. And then another piece in the back. I started dating them. Sounds like I took up to McDonald's. But anyway, here's another one. This one had too many layers, probably. I mean, that one's got a lot down there. And then I did this bird that is, um, he is flying overhead. So he would be, these are his little legs. And then all of his little wings, I kind of went a little crazy there. Those, some of them got cut off. But 
I liked that I was doing it. And I liked that I was able to pull in it eased into this darker color. Same thing kind of over here, kind of did it naturally. Then I added some of these kind of has a darker, you can see where the bones are, I guess. Um, and you can't see their eyes. We're almost done. So this is probably my favorite one. Um, definitely owed to Paul, me pushing. Um, his wing is that cotty paper. His wing is over here a little bit. Now, I think it's difficult to, it would have been better had I done the most back things first, I guess, but you can't always do it. So this was first and then this, and, you know, this really should be, this is in front of this, if it was in real life drawing. So I'm still kind of figuring out, but the goal is in, in 75 days that I have come up with a process that will work. Now, not just that it will work for me making these, there's some freedom of not having any kind of output for this. Um, this, just so you know, has tons. All those are lots of little cuts. I mean, this one is not that big and it has tons of cutting. So, and he's stuck, that's the water. Last one, or oh, there's one more. And then him, he's, it's hard to see. Perspective, I'm still working on. And I think this is one of the reasons that I switched to, um, I switched, sorry about the Blair Witch stuff. Or, this is the last one. I switched to chickens because I felt like, it looked like his, he had like abs. I don't know. Um, hey, Amy, no problem. Um, but there's some neat texture for sure. And I guess to me, what is great, I'm going to stop the share. But the thing that's great is that there isn't an objective. And how often do we do things that aren't, how often do we try to get better at something and put it out there um, for feedback or for critique or just for encouragement and we really dive into a subject so lots of times they'll have like a 30 day with or you're doing inktober or you're doing something else and i've found that i can do those but about now day 25 26 27 it gets really hard so when i'm even like when students or when i'm trying to come up with lots of different ideas concepts or something about 30 is when i get it starts getting hard but really what i've done is i've just exhausted all of the um all of the the normal things that normal people think of and then now it's pushing into what else so one of the reasons that I didn't want to just keep making new color palettes and new paper, because that would just be, I mean, I have all this paper, like let's use what we got. There was something really fun about that, the making of the paper, but there is something challenging in, can I push myself to really see where I'm having a problem like with their legs or with the shading or, okay, instead of like, I'm going to redo this one over. No, I'm just going to try to do the dark things first and then work into the highlights or I have to think about it. I have to approach it. So my goal in 75 days is to figure out a process of one, just making that, that they do sort of connect together, either the way they look, or maybe there's a style that I'm using maybe I'm always exaggerating their beaks or it looks sort of normal um, or realistic, but it's exaggerated in some ways. I think that the ones that I'm really enjoying and the ones I see other people enjoying is the ones that have the most personality. And that is me choosing which ones to do. Um, so there's something in that, but then I have that second step of what am I going to do with these? And I'm just going to show you a tiny bit of what I've been trying to do. I am figuring out a process. I don't have it figured out, but by the end of 75 days, just like Maura said, her 100 days was 150 days because we need time to figure out what's going to work 
for us. And then you need time to get efficient and perfect it. But maybe part of it is what I had noticed when I did the hundred faces was that I was getting better. I was using some similar materials. It wasn't completely, I still had like a color palette, but it wasn't as confined as what I am now. And I think that there's something that helps me go deeper and helps me get better. It also helps me to see what's wrong. Like, I don't know how to get that foot in that way. I'm having trouble with perspective. Like when a duck or a goose is walking away from you, their foot looks different, you know, it's like in the air. And it's like, if I don't spend time working on that, I don't want to redo the same thing, but yeah, foreshortening. I, but what could I just focus on just getting better every day. And maybe it's not 30 minutes. Maybe some days it's just five minutes in a sketch, but I'm no problem. I, um, but sometimes I think that I've taken a lot of classes on just birds. And so I see how other people do. And then it's like, okay, well, I want to try. I want to get dirty. I want to see what works. And I've definitely seen things that don't work. Um, absolutely. And I'm, I keep hitting like a, 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 maybe it's a plateau or I keep hitting some place that I don't like. So then I'm like, okay, I, I'm looking at it and this is what I did with the hundred faces. I look at it and say, I don't like this. I'm going to move forward, uh, in a different direction. But I'm not just doing one in the different direction, which is kind of what I did with the hundred faces. Now I'm doing more in that until I hit that plateau or a an ugly, I don't like this. I don't want to do this anymore. So anyway, that's that's what I'm doing. I do think it's fun. I need accountability when I do things like this. I don't know if y'all do, but I mean, again, these other people are not, they're 30 day challenge or 75 day challenge. They have a different prompt every day, but for me, it was really important. And other people are kind of doing their own thing. They're just using it as a community for accountability, which I think is good that I'm not the only one that's not doing using the rules or, you know, but for me, I really needed to dive deep in, into the structure of a bird and what part of birds. Now I have birds on my wall and I'll show you. I should have just left. I should have, I don't know, maybe I'll just, anyway, I'm just going to show you these back here really quick. So I have these back here. So these are uh, Jane Houghton and I have these two birds. Um, I have this little Jane Houghton bird. She's in plastic. I have this one from Doc. And that one's Jane Houghton as well. And then I have this little bird. I mean, I have a lot of birds around um, that I'm looking at all the time. Let me stop this here. And so I see and her, the, her birds, Jane's birds and Doc's birds are not realistic, but they're not not realistic. They're, they have elements. So what parts am I going? I'm not even at. I've only. Oh. Where's the February 14th bird? Hmm, he must be gotten stuck somewhere. Anyway, there was this black bird that I made out of my head. So I've only done two kind of out of my imagination bird. So I think that there's maybe more will come, but I still think right now I need it. I need to know what's really happening in the bird. I don't want it to be photorealistic. I'm going to do one more share. This is on the computer. So you get to see, but then I'm taking them into illustrator. And this was that thing that I scanned in from my um, sketchbook. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to make a pattern with this. So this is one of the patterns. This is the color palette that I'm working on. Um, And then I made some other, like that was that one bird, but I didn't like how, I don't think this worked. This is too much and he doesn't have an underbill. And so I haven't figured out how those are going to work. I think what I ended up doing more recently is um, taking it into 
um, procreate and redrawing. So I have all the, look, I kind of made a little dog out of these little shapes. I made a brush and I thought this is just these, but in a different kind of pattern. So again, I'm really thinking about what patterns I can make. And I like to make things that are real, that were real drawings. And then I just re using image trace in um, Illustrator. So you can kind of see, I was trying to work with some of the image trace elements that Illustrator does and it just, it wasn't working. So, but that's okay. Everything doesn't have to work, but I'm figuring it out. So it's not like I'm just doing things only on, on the computer and everything's, or only on Procreate. Not that that's bad either, but just for me, like that's another kind of very simplified bird. Um, you know, a couple, there was that one, there's that little guy. This is before I converted it. This is one bird that I did before I started. I feel like he's in a different style, so I'm not going to do him, but like, at least I've taken the time to scan things and work on things. And then all of these that will be in here will be using the same color palette. I'm not sure where I am. I don't know if I like all the colors in this color palette. I do really like this pattern. I think that one's really fun. Um, again, maybe I'm a little bit better at some of the simpler um, color. Uh, some, I'm not, hero patterns are not where I am great at in the beginning. So, that's what I'm learning and what I'm doing. Um, where do you get stuck when you're at the 30? Are you hitting a plateau? Do you give up? Um, do you keep, keep working? Um, those are things that for me, I need accountability. So I use today for that. And this is still love on designers. So this week, if you could take time to, lift somebody up who maybe you, they caught your attention and just tell them you can see them improving or um, maybe they've had a great big goal or they've finished a client project or who knows, just could you find somebody and just lift them up and maybe lift that same person up all week and just make a difference in their life because you see them Um if we could all do that for one other person, I think it can make the world a better place this week. So, um, and the next week I have my friend Pippa and we're going to be talking about how we've collaborated, how, um, how she collaborates with her clients and then how I collaborate with my clients and how we're co-creating something that is, it's her website, but we're co-creating it. And then I've, made patterns specifically for her, for her website. So I'm excited that I've been able to incorporate my patterns in things that are, are for things that hopefully I can get licensed, but also, oh, hey, John, um, I definitely need uh, accountability and challenges as well. Um, it is hard to form the new habit. For me, I would give up if um, if I couldn't see progress or if I was like, oh, I don't like this, then sometimes I would step back. And what I need is there's 75 days. You got to keep trying until you find a process that does work and is uh, repeatable. So when I did, a f I did like four um, of the birds, I didn't like any of them in the computer. And so I was like, nope, that's not the process for me, but I'm not giving up. I'm just trying something else. So it's just problem solving. So that part's fun. Anyway, um, brought to you by Cotty Papers today and Jackson Art. But man, when they have a sale, these big A4, A4, it's like 11 by 17 almost. Um, it was $2.21, 20 sheets of paper. Pretty okay, GSM. Um, but anyway, really good uh, deals on their paper. Jackson art, the, the Cotty papers, that one, the book I showed you was like $20. This one, 46 cents. And it's fairly good inside paper, but I don't know. 
um, I haven't tried really thick and I'll show you this one other one. Anyway, this one is the one, look at how big this is. Look how big, $2.21 for 20 sheets. That's amazing to me. Anyway, um, Jackson's Art, they're not really a sponsor, of course. I just like sharing my deals with y'all. Um, thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. And in March, just so you know, I was going to do a workshop, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down this book into four parts and each week is going to be a workshop like thing. I'll have handouts and you can download them and we're going to be figuring out how to tell your story. Um, at, in a little workshop style. So they may be a little bit shorter, hopefully, Lord knows. Um, and uh, anyway, so that'll be what March is. But I'll see you next week. Love on some designers this week. Thank you. And I'll <laughs> send out a link of my favorite papers. All right. Thank you for being here. And I appreciate you watching my birds. Bye, y'all. <laughs>